Hey friends, it's Josh. I focused on the subject of discipleship in my last couple of videos, what it actually means to be a disciple of Jesus, and then what Jesus actually taught his followers. I said in both of those videos that to be a disciple of Jesus means that we learn from him, we obey him, and we imitate him. I talked about some of Jesus's words on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 through 7 in the first video, and then I discussed hiddenness and seeking praise from God rather than praise from man in the second video. And I want to continue in this video with another related idea along the same lines, that to be a disciple of Jesus will cause you on one level or another to be misunderstood, to be marginalized, to look foolish, to be persecuted, and to be hated in the eyes of the world. Exciting stuff, right? Now, in the West, especially here in America and where I live in the South, it's easy and it's almost expected to say that you're a follower of Jesus, or maybe as said here often that you're a Christian. And that's a bit of a problem. Why? Well, there's a couple of reasons among probably many more. First, the culture that we live in isn't generally hostile toward people who say they follow Jesus. And secondly, probably the underlying cause of the first reason, that following Jesus here has been simplified to attending church on a Sunday, frequenting Chick-fil-A and Hobby Lobby, not doing bad stuff, and voting for political candidates of a particular persuasion. But when we read the words of Jesus and the accounts of his disciples in the scriptures, we glimpse a far different picture than what many likely of us here experience in the West. And as I said in the first video in the short series on discipleship, Jesus teaches his disciples to do some offensive and seemingly unreasonable things. He says, when you're slapped by evil people, what do you do? You turn the other cheek and you let them slap that too. Or when someone wrongly takes you to court, you give them more than what you're sued for. Or when an authority wrongly compels you to work for them, you submit to that overreach. And as I mentioned in the last video, a disciple of Jesus pays attention to what they do in secret and seeks to be pleasing to God in everything, especially when no one is looking. So according to Jesus, this kind of humility before others and before God is what characterizes a true disciple. In Matthew 11, Jesus said this, "'Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest.'" Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, Jesus is using familiar language to Jews at the time. This phrase, come to me, is disciple language. Like Matthew 16, when Jesus would say, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, back in the day, a rabbi would invite others to be his disciple by using this phrase, come to me or come after me. And this would have been a great honor in the ancient world to be personally invited to sit at the feet of a rabbi, to listen to his teaching, and then to imitate his lifestyle. So Matthew 11 has relevance for everyone who calls themselves a disciple of Jesus or a follower of Jesus. Now, Jesus says something about himself there in that passage in Matthew 11. He says that he's gentle and he's lowly in heart. Other translations might say he's meek or humble. Now, the word used for meek or gentle refers to an attitude. Like if someone's meek, they don't try to exalt themselves. And then the word that's used for lowly or humble is referring to a low social status. Now, of course, Jesus here is embodying and exemplifying his interpretation of the Torah, and all of his teachings reflect this same kind of humble heart posture and dependence on God for everything. Now, we know life in the first century in the Roman Empire is quite different than life in the 21st century in the West. But embracing Jesus' teachings and his manner of life, no matter the time or the culture that we live in, is going to result in, at best, misunderstanding and marginalization and looking very foolish, and at worst, being hated, persecuted, and martyred. Of course, we can see this entire spectrum in the life of Jesus himself. He's the example, and when a disciple truly embraces his teachings and manner of life, it's going to result in the same kind of negative response that Jesus received. Think about it. If someone comes and takes advantage of you in whatever way, and you don't seek revenge on them, but instead you forgive them and commit yourself to God, or if someone wrongly takes something from you and you don't seek to make them pay for what they did, or uh, instead you, you return kindness and favor, or 
than if you're marginalized or even mistreated because of your commitment to the gospel and to the teachings of Jesus, and you bear whatever reproach or suffering comes your way instead of turning aside from the faith and uh, in, in just to preserve your own comfort or reputation, in doing all of those things and more, really, we imitate Jesus and his manner of life. And this is the kind of life that's well-pleasing to God, one that he approves of and one that he's going to raise to life on the last day to inherit the world to come where there's no death, sorrow, crying, or pain. But of course, this way of life is not the way that the world lives. And this message of repentance and the day of judgment is not anything the world wants to hear. A disciple of Jesus has turned from that ungodly and that worldly way of life, those fleshly lusts and those ungodly attitudes and responses. So when someone lives like Jesus and call others, calls others to obey him and imitate him, then this is why the world was going to hate Jesus' disciples just as they hated him. Jesus himself says these words in Matthew 24, verse 9, talking about disciples at the end of the age. He says, they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures until the end will be saved. And then this, he says in Luke 6, Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. He also said this in John 15, talking to his disciples. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. So to be a disciple of Jesus is to proclaim the message he did, to imitate the way he lived, and to anticipate God's coming intervention in the affairs of man and to live in light of the day of judgment and the soon kingdom of God. And in saying this, I'm not primarily talking about involvement in culture wars or politics or social media. I'm talking about how we live and deal with, first and foremost, the situations and the people around us in our everyday lives and what we do behind closed doors when no one is looking. This is where discipleship begins, and I fear that a lot of what's happened here in the West makes us focus more on the culture and less on our actual neighbors that live next to us, or our family members, or our co-workers. We need to settle it in our hearts that to be a disciple of Jesus means that we're going to be despised and look foolish in the eyes of those that don't follow him. Maybe, that, well, likely, this is going to be co-workers, family members, or neighbors, and then maybe when the Lord adds some more weight to the bar here in the West— Maybe a larger group of people it's going to be, or authorities, they may hate us or take advantage of us. They may persecute us or even kill us. As Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 3, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But just as Jesus entrusted himself to God, just as he lived fully before God's eyes and sought to be pleasing to him, and just as God raised him from the dead and is going to vindicate him in the sight of all the nations at his soon appearing, so God is going to do the same for his loyal disciples. As I've said often in my past videos, what we believe about the future changes the way we live in the present. If the God of Israel is trustworthy to do all that he's promised, and if the age to come is going to be characterized by humility and kindness and servanthood, then the only appropriate response is to live this way today in imitation of Jesus and to proclaim that coming day with boldness, no matter the cost. Amen. If this was encouraging, like this video and drop a comment below. And if you haven't seen the other two videos in this short series on discipleship, I've linked them down in the description below. Also, check out the other videos here on my channel if these subjects interest you. God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.